These five keys are used by Bill Gates, Stephen Jobs. They're used by McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken. All the major organizations and companies in the world that are doing very well, they use these five principles. Matter of fact, this is the verse that Bill Gates is using. Stephen Jobs is using this for Apple computers. You keep going to the bank to borrow money to buy stuff that isn't productive. I mean, if you're going to buy a vehicle, buy a truck, so you can become one who collects garbage to produce a business. Don't buy a car to drive around in. That ain't productive. Every problem is a business. One of the keys of successful business is being able to reproduce your product a million times more. Five kingdom keys for business success. That's what we're going to focus on today. And uh, leadership is a result of a person who have discovered these five kingdom keys that were introduced by God. They are necessary for personal and corporate success. These five keys are used by Bill Gates, Stephen Jobs, they're used by McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken. These five keys are used by Pizza Hut, Denny's. These five keys are used by Coca-Cola. All the major organizations and companies in the world that are doing very well, they use these five principles. And yet these five principles came from the Bible. So what shocks me is that the people that we call the world are using them very successfully and the folks who are claiming to be in uh, God they are suffering struggling okay here we go I'm coming now to the six laws of business actually I'll give you uh, five of them This is the first statement God makes concerning business and every person in business success are following them. Matter of fact, this is the verse that Bill Gates is using. Stephen Jobs is using this for Apple computers. iPods are using this. iPhone is using this verse. McDonald's is using this verse. Kentucky Fried Chicken is using this verse. Pizza Hut is using this verse. And the saints keep avoiding it. They are making billions from this verse. God said to man, be fruitful. What's the first command? Be fruitful. Second command, multiply. Third command, replenish fourth command subdue fifth command have dominion now notice he said over fish over birds over fowl over living things in the screen okay but he gives this man four or oh yes five simple instructions and then god left him god gave man a business strategy now the verse before this is verse 27 right so God created man, etc. And the verse before that is, is verse 26, right? And that's when God says what? Have dominion. So God tells man in 26, have dominion. In 28, he tells him a strategy on how to have dominion. He didn't leave him without the strategy. He says, here's how you dominate. Look at it carefully. He says, be fruitful, you multiply, you replenish, you subdue, and then you'll have dominion. You say it again, be, fr be fruitful. You multiply, you replenish, you subdue, then you have dominion. He's, first he said have dominion. Then he says, now let me tell you how. First you got to be fruitful, then you got to multiply, then you got to replenish, then you got to subdue, and then you have dominion. Who dominates golf? Who dominates uh, Big Mac? Who dominates chicken? Okay, fried chicken. Isn't that amazing? These people, do, these people dominate these areas. Who
Who dominates Whopper? It's amazing that I can call a name of a product and it controls the whole area. The four laws of business. Number one, be fruitful. Okay, this is where business begins. The word fruitful in Hebrew means productive. It doesn't mean to have children. I was shocked when I discovered that. Uh, the first command God gave man was what? Be productive. In other words, produce something. Say it. Be productive. Stop saying fruitful because you're thinking about babies. Tell your neighbor, be productive. be productive. No, say it this way. Produce something that I could buy. That's the first command. Now, here's something important to remember. The first command is to be what? Fruitful. The first command should have been be seedful. Because fruit is a result of seed. You can't have fruit unless you have a seed that has a tree that bear fruit. God ignores the entire first step. Look at me, man. Just get deep now. God said, look, I even ain't going to talk about seed. Oh, you still ain't got it. Listen, when God demands something from you, it exists. So the demand for fruit is a presumption that there is seed somewhere. The number one reason why there's poverty in North Tulsa is not because of a lack of investors coming in, but a lack of productivity inside. Listen, listen, here's how you measure a nation's wealth. Listen carefully. A nation's wealth is measured by three letters, all nations. Gross national productivity. In other words, if the nation ain't producing, they call it poor in the UN. Money doesn't make you rich. Productivity does. That's why China is one of the biggest threats right now. Even though they may be poor, they are producing. What do most people in the North Tulsa do? Consume. Uh huh. You keep going to the bank to borrow money to buy stuff that isn't productive. I mean, if you're going to buy a vehicle, buy a truck so you can become one who collects garbage to produce a business. Don't buy a car to drive around in. That ain't productive. The command presumes that seed exists in you right now. There's a seed that's your business. And God says, show me the fruit of it. Produce something. Now when you produce a product, watch God's strategy now. Let's say, okay, Apple computer. Stephen Jobs quit school because he had an idea. Hey boy, say idea. idea. That's your seed. Your seed is the idea that won't quit. This guy had an idea. He went to visit a plant to see a computer. And he went and he saw this computer and the computer was big as half of this room. He looked at it and he says, why can't they reduce that to the size of a desk? And he walked out and he kept seeing visions of that great massive computer the size of a room on a desk. I wonder what you see that won't leave you alone. Write this down. Every problem is a business. I'm going to say it again. Every problem is a business. One man see bare feet, that's a problem. The other one see a shoe company, that's a business. One man see a hog island, that's a problem. Another man sees a resort, that's a business. Produce your seed produce your fruit and then the second command multiply you know when you produce a product then you got to reproduce it if you cannot reproduce what you have produced you're going to be poor one of the keys of successful business is being able to reproduce your product a million times more any good company 
that wants to succeed must be able to follow God's second command to multiply so that's why when you want to see <laughs> there was only one Burger King years ago one restaurant that sold one Burger King they refined hey boys they refined they produced a fruit now everybody makes burgers but they produce a unique burger called a Whopper come on somebody now you make burgers at home don't you but when you want a Whopper you go straight to Burger King even though you got the same bread and beef and all this stuff you still want it because they refined it everybody said refined it I'm talking see you you got to take your seed and produce a fruit and you refine it first if you're going to be a cosmetologist you still ain't going to be wealthy because anybody can be a cosmetologist you got to find what kind of cosmetologist you will be what are you going to specialize in? Everybody sells burgers, but no one sells a whopper. What's your whopper? That's the question. Now watch Burger King. Burger King then takes this whopper sandwich that they refined and they developed a system. Everybody says system to reproduce the same whopper every time. So when I went to Mexico one day, we went to, to a Burger King. The same Whopper came out in Mexico. We went down to Venezuela, Burger King, the same Whopper. We were in U the Ukraine, in Russia, the same one. I said, how can the same Whopper be in every country? Because they reproduce. I poured. They didn't develop one prototype, you know, one prototype. And they kept testing it and testing it one prototype and when they got that one prototype down to a science that's the fruit then they said okay now let's assembly line and they start multiplying what you cannot multiply you can never succeed in my message is my fruit leadership kingdom purpose they're my fruit now I got to put them in a form where they can be multiplied. So now I got to shift into books and CDs and DVDs and, and then they're, they're 25 different languages. I got to multiply. Same message. If you want a Big Mac, you can never get it from Burger King. Because Big Mac is McDonald's fruit. And they keep reproducing it. God's third command, replenish. Is a big one if you're going to be successful in business you got to be able to distribute your product you got to develop a distribution system okay Walden bless his heart had one store he said okay I got my fruit I got a store where you can actually come in and get wholesale prices man the guy had one store that's number one number two he decided I want to follow God's second command I want to multiply so you create a system to reproduce Walmart all over the world number three he said I'm gonna distribute my products to those stores Walmart got his own distribution system what about yours and God's fourth command business subdue subdue means you control the market to subdue means to control if you do not control your market you will die poor <laughs> simple isn't it bill gates was so successful in following god's commands that congress had to call him in remember he was so dominating in the market they said, you got to break up your company. We, we can't have you controlling the whole world like this. Why? He subdued the market. If you wanted anything to do with software and computers, you got to come through Microsoft. Can I put it another way? Subdue means when anybody wants a product like yours, you're the first one they think about. Subdue. So Ford Motor Company says, we're going to subdue the truck market. So they focus on trucks. Mercedes said, we're going to focus on luxury cars. Lexus say, we're going to be focusing on quietness. Everybody got their little unique burger, see? What's yours? Listen, stop going into just shoe business. You're going to lose. Everybody's selling shoes. 
You got to find a unique kind of shoe. In other words, I'm only going to sell shoes for babies. Now you got your niche. You got your whopper. Stop selling shoes for everybody. You're confusing the market. I only sell shoes for teenagers. You got your whopper. Now you got to reproduce that every time. Open four stores. Then you got to distribute. Make sure that you can get the shoes in every store on time. Then you have to control the market. If you want shoes for teenagers, you got to come to me. I got the most current. I got the widest variety. This is where you come. This business. By the way, uh, this applies, you know, I'm not in a pastor's conference, but I teach the pastors too. Your church got to follow this. Your church got to have a unique fruit that makes it different from every other church. But everybody clapping and singing. You better have something that is so different. And then when you open another branch, you can reproduce the same spirit. God says, subdue. Oprah Winfrey, boy, she did a good job. She packaged her seed, reproduced it in her shows, distributed it in every available media company wants a show. Same show. I said, same show. She don't have five shows. <laughs> She refined that one hour. That's her fruit. And then she multiplies it. They produce it, a million different copies of that tape. And then she distributes it to all those media houses. And then she subdues the talk show day. She controls it. And now we leave the number five. She dominates. Microsoft dominates. I poured. Stephen Jobs dominate. What are you going to dominate? T.D. Jakes called me up one day. He says, Miles, um, I'm about to have a leadership conference on a cruise. And uh, the first person that came to my mind was you. That's when you know you are dominating in the field. It's when your name comes to mind first. If someone says, let's eat a Whopper today. You ain't got to decide where you're going anymore. <laughs> Is there something that you have produced that makes us find you? <laughs>